Hi, welcome to the Biomedical Engineering News Podcast. This is your host, Nicholas A. Casado. Grateful to be here. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, All right, so today in the world, we've got a bunch of fun things. We're going to go with bioelectronics going to talk about robotic nose gps for biotherapy growing skeletal muscle and their biohack of the day haida lajin cool hope you're excited let's get right into this i'm gonna turn this down a little bit more and as we get into our first topic of the day let me get a little bit tiny over here all right thanks to anybody that's watching live on youtube um also on twitch doing another simul cast uh, casting to twitch also and i think we should be i didn't even check but hopefully we're on D Live blockchain streaming. Yep, pretty cool. Um, just checking real quick to me just to make sure all the streams are okay. Everything's good with me. But in this first, uh, first topic, we've got Sakal Inal, associate professor of bioengineering at QS which is the leading organic bioelectronics group since 2016. And she has a PhD from Potsdam, Potsdam, Germany. And here she is. There she is, I scrolled right past her. Quick little interview. But um, yeah, let's see what she is interested. This was po posted in Communications Biology of uh, Nature Magazine. And here we go. So she has a background in textile engineering and she embarked on this journey using uh, bioelectronics to address health issues. All right, so her thing is smart materials and textile engineering, you know, polymers used in textiles have some special powers and importantly, they interface with the human skin. So that's pretty interesting. Engineering uh, principles, how to handle polymers, transform them into useful products for end users. Um, so yeah, polymer based devices. Okay, so I think there are some good things uh, in that, but I think we've talked about some issues. And yeah, I think the most uh, prominent is BPA and I was thinking about recently BPA versus polymers and I think that's mostly in the food industry all right so here we go first one is BPA free is irrelevant to most plastics and it's organic BPA which stands for by by phenol a it's an organic synthetic compound uh, poorly soluble in water. Okay. The, so this is the first, and this is from Brentwood Plastics. The truth about the hysteria over whether BPA residue is real or contrived is up for grabs. Manufacturers and retailers of canned goods are under tremendous pressure to prove their cans do not contain BPA residue, even in the absence of uh, a viable alternative. We're not going to take sides. Polyethylene and other commodity polymers have an airtight alibi. They are nowhere near the scene of the manufacturers of polymers made with BPA as part of the processes. Okay, so po polyethylene. Okay. Uh, BPA is a precursor catalyst to make some uh, polymers such as PVC, polycarbonate, and mostly epoxy. Like any catalyst is transformed in the reaction and the controversy is what levels of residue are toxic. All right. 
while bagged in polyethylene would have no BPA because BPA is not used in the production of commodity polymers. According to the recent study by the U.S. Food uh, FDA, low-dose exposure to BPA did not result in adverse health effects. For the full report on BPA in cans, click here. Clicking. Yeah, it's got shelf liners made from polyethylene, BPA-free polypropylene. Hmm. It's a polyethylene film degrades when exposed to ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays ex accelerate the ex oxidation of plastics. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's good. Actually, let's go back real quick. Uh, okay, so, so what we can say is maybe UV on polyethylene is bad, but I mean, what, we, we just said polyethylene doesn't contain BPA. What are the other, um, bad things they're notorious for uh, yeah I think there's definitely worse off um, polymers than polyethylene um, so just sending out this Okay. BPA polymers health effects. to Reddit, old fashioned Reddit, live searching, um, yeah, I'd like to know the answer, alright, so, alright, so this is a big list, polyethylene, suspected human carcinogen, polyester, eye and respiratory tract, acute skin rashes, acrylic, And they definitely have references, so I think we can just say maybe that previous report was a little bit biased because it was from. Yep, so very low exposure to BPA exposure to cancers, impaired immune function, onset, early onset to puberty. Yeah, there's a bunch. All right. Um, well, I mean, let's just get back to the article. So, there are electronic polymers. That's what we're getting at. I learned more about the fundamentals of polymers and where I discovered the electronic ones. After working with polymers that have distinct and optical electronic properties for pathogen detection in my PhD, I knew that I need to learn more biology and get hands-on experience. Great. Love it. Love it. And if you're watching, I hope you love it too. Great. Love it. All right. 
she doesn't get into it though yeah why is she not talk about bioelectronic polymer what general advice would you give on the house that establish a successful academic career tell us about your emerging your research environmental in, in saudi arabia biosensors constitute a very exciting research field with which development are you most excited about? All right. The pandemic showed a gap in our diagnostic toolbox and the immediate need for affordable and portable rapid tools that can detect the virus. As such, research from several teams, including ours, have started to focus more on translational activities. I find it very exciting that globally there's more funding to support such efforts. Very generalized. All right, let's look at our thing. All right, where electronics meet biology. This is the organic uh, bioelectronics laboratory of King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. Okay, pretty cool. There's the team. Forget which one she is. Probably her right there, yeah, with the glasses. Mm -hmm. Now, associate professor. All right, publication advanced materials cover. Conducting polymer scaffolds for hosting and monitoring 3D cell culture. All right, you heard it here, folks. This is gonna be our abstract of the day. I hope you're excited. I know I am. Let me play this for you. This is why we come. All right, I'm gonna pause that. There we go. Oh, I can't hear it. Did you guys hear that at all? Huh. Did not hear that. I don't hear it. I do not hear it. Last try. All right, maybe we can play another way. Here we go. Abstract. Abstract. This is our abstract of the day. Yeah, abstract of the day. I hope you're excited because I am definitely. All right, in this abstract, we had to dig for it. I, I don't think we we're ready, but here it is. It is conducting polymer scaffolds for hosting and monitoring 3D cell culture. Now, this doesn't sound like. All right, yeah, okay, we're going to get to it. All right, this work reports on the design of a live cell monitoring platform based on a macroporous scaffold of a conducting polymer. The conducting polymer scaffolds support 3D cell cultures due to their biocompatibility and tissue-like elasticity, which can be manipulated by the inclusion of polymers. Hmm. By the inclusion I lost my place by the inclusion of biopolymers such as collagen 
integration of a media per perfusion tube inside the scaffold enables homogeneous cell spreading and fluid transport throughout the scaffold ensuring long term ensuring long term cell viability this also allows for co-culture of multiple cell types inside the scaffold the inclusion of cells within the porous architecture affects the impedance of the electrically conducting polymer network and thus is utilized as a situ tool to monitor cell growth. Therefore, while being an integral part of the 3D tissue, the conducting polymer is an active component, enhancing the tissue function and forming the basis of a bioelectric device with integrated sensing capabilities. Did you guys hear that? That was... All right, not fear-mongering, but definitely amazing. I think that's great how they can use Electric polymers, scaffolding, inclusion of biopolymers such as collagen. Love it. All right. Cool. Let's move on. We just covered uh, bioelectronics. So now we're on robotic nose. Let's get a little transition. Yeah. Thanks for listening. All right, a robotic GPS for targeting and delivering regenerative biotherapies. Now, I hope you're excited because a remote-controlled bronchioscope that acts like a GPS system hunts down hard... Wait, this isn't a robotic nose? Sorry, guys. Oh, my gosh. All right. Engineering professor <laughs> develops... Where's my head at? All right, robotic nose. Let's do it. This is uh, from the Observer, and all right, this is the newest, hottest, trendiest nose that's on the rise, but it may come as a shock. Slim noses, wide noses, butt noses, hook noses are all in the past. The future is robotic noses. Now, I don't think if you guys can see this, but it's a clear nose. I didn't see it at first, but let's get right into it. Actually, here we go. This is funny. Uh, the first electronic nose originated over a decade and a half ago in the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory to be used in space stations. <laughs> Why would they bring up a nose to the space station? Alright, when considering the five senses. The importance of smell is often overlooked. Smell is vital in ensuring the safety of many people. This past Wednesday, Myung received an email. Myung, the engineering professor, um, not really where, but yeah, the developer of this knows, all right? So he received an email from a parent in Greece, which expressed nervousness for the well-being of their child. Yeah, pretty cool. There we go. Let me click that. Cool. All right. So Myung and his team drew inspiration from the physiology of the human nose. It relies on olfactory sensors that respond to cells. The sensors transmit electrical signal to the brain. Where the pattern if of that signal is recorded. Yep, it is Bluetooth enabled. And it, instead of using biological molecules, they use nanoengineering material, which responds to exposure of all smells. Instead of neurons transmitted electronically, Bluetooth sends a signal to your computer. So heart smartwatches already exist to measure heart rate, <gasps> temperature, and all sorts of medical information that is sent to phones. My own ponder the implication of having a smartwatch that can perceive what is in the air. Can you imagine now having a smartwatch that actually can see what's in the air? Robotic noses are not only relevant for amnesia patients, but can be applied to a wide range of markets.
my question is, do amnesia patients lose smell? Uh, doesn't say, but it does say after a concussion, some olfactory nerve damage can cause a smell in tw 10 to 20 uh, percent of the patients. All right. I don't see anything on it, so I guess not. I wonder why they say that, though. Uh, but can be applied to a wide range of markets, and they can be used on naval ships to identify dangerous odors. People with severe allergies can use it to ensure that food is safe, or they could even be used to detect cancers by chain analyzing changes in their chemical makeup of urine. You know, they don't really have much on it. That's it. That's that's all they have on it. Yeah. They mentioned Notre Dame. Maybe it works for Notre Dame. I don't know. But... That's it. Just a small taste of what a nose could look like in the future. Now time for robotic GPS. Hope you're ready. Gotta fix this real quick. All right. Get a little transition. Okay. We've got possibly one viewer in the Twitch stream, and hope you're watching. Hope you're having a great day. Hmm. I'm going to turn on the phones. Maybe that'll help. I know we can always do call-ins, but nobody's even here, so. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll set up the phone for next time for live colons, but um Yes. All right. So, robotic GPS for targeting and delivering regenerative biotherapies. This is a remote controlled bronchoscope that acts like a GPS system, haunts down hard to find lung masses and accurately die biopsies them. According to the Mayo Clinic collaborative study, this multi-site research which is published in this journal article lays the foundation for precisely finding early stage cancer and targeting it with regenerative biotherapies needs to stimulate healing. So AI Glance uh, gleaned from CT scans detects the robotic fiber optic cable providing a GPS like pathway to tiny nodes or masses that manual bronchi bronchioscopes might miss. A biopsy is performed through the airway rather than through the skin, which may make it easier for patients to tolerate. Surgeon navigates the bronchioscope with a remote guide wheel, 
taking by tracking by screen its journey in real time through the lungs. Yep. New technology offers hope for targeting restorative therapies to cancer cells while preserving surround, s surrounding healthy tissues. Researchers at Mayo Clinic and five other, other academic medical researchers tested this remote control technology on 241 patients. In the widest range study of this particular technology to date, the robotic bronchoscope accurately located and biopsied 291 lung nodes. The study found very low risk of lung collapse or bleeding. So Mayo Clinic aspires to deliver first of their kind biotherapies that provide new cures, treatments that can be delivered by bronchoscopes to intric intricate places in the lungs or other parts of the body. That's pretty interesting. I love it. I love it. Stick a tube down my throat, then stick a robot GPS. It's pretty interesting. Let's look at the actual report though. Ooh, they didn't link the report. Huh. Okay, let's see if this is Yeah. Technology and techniques for shape sensing robotic assistic bronchoscopy. Alright. And they probably have it behind a paywall. Yep. Yeah. Uh, maybe I could check it out on. I hope this doesn't mess it up. Yeah, I'm not a member, so I gotta. Love it. All right, let's move on to the next. Here we go. All right, if you're wondering what I was just spraying is rose water, some nothing like some good aromatherapy and. In this article, we have skeletal muscles grown in a dish offers insight into neuromuscular diseases. Now, in the fight against diseases like ALS, USC Verbetti, biomedical engineering researchers have created a powerful lab to see how our muscles and neurons connect. Woo! My buddy goes to USC. Let's look at this video real quick just to have some insight. Week one, Twitch. All right, all right, let's just get right into it. Neuromuscular diseases are debilitating and mostly incurable, affecting 160 out of 100,000 pe 100, people worldwide. Disorders such as ALS and multiple sclerosis impact the function of muscles, causing muscle wastage and loss of motor function. A major hurdle in the fight against these diseases is the fact that it is notoriously difficult to grow tissue in a lab that shows the connection between our muscles and the neurons that control them. Until now. So the students at, PhD students at University of Southern California School of Engineering have created a vastly improved new lab grown tissue model that offers a more stable view of the neuromuscular junction important part of their system that translates electrical impulses generated by the neurons in our spine into electricity uh, into electric electrical activity and movement in our muscle fibers so it was published in APL bioengineering and it was led by Jeffrey Santoso PhD student yep all right neuromal the neuromuscular junction is the space where the neurons will release signaling Molecules called neurotransmitters, which then bind into receptors that are located on the surface of muscle fibers. And when these molecules attach to those receptors, it causes the muscle cell to be depolarized. So there's a high voltage, and that's what causes your muscles to contract. Here we go. Let's watch it. Oh. Okay. Week one, tinnitus stimulation. All right, a little, 
little shock. So we got a chick, a human, and then the lab grown muscle. Chick is very flexy. Human's not so flexy. Oh, this lab grown is pretty good. Not really. I mean, it's doing as good as a human. The chick is flying. Chick muscle. Yeah, but it's pretty much comparable. Alright. Lab-grown tissue models is crucial for understanding age-related degeneration or the progression of neuromuscular disease, as well as most of the most effective treatments. However, researchers have struggled to c replicate the complex connection or a neural point in lab models where they try to grow muscle fibers and neurons together. All right, in this photo, there's the neuromuscular junction. The motor, motor neuron is shown in green, and then they add the white stain. Um, for acyloacroic receptors, and this overlap is a distinct folding pattern, is key for junction development and reliable signaling. This structure does not form easily without the longer culture time survived by the new uh, gelatin hydrogel process. Alright, that was pretty good. I think it definitely shows what can happen, and let's transition. Yeah. You know, I was looking at Pai de la Gine, and Pai de la Gine was, um, I don't know, I think introduced to me through... Devin, the airbender, and Hi, my name is Wong Ji Xiao. Let's hear what this is. To Pai Da La Jing YouTube. This is a platform demonstrating and showing you how to do Pai Da La Jing self healing. You can also see the testimonials of doing Pai Da La Jing from all of the world. You're also welcome to put on your testimonials here. And we can share and learn from each other. Thank you. Are we going to talk about that bump on his head? All right. So, by the way, um, apparently it's an introduction, but let's see if his bump is still on his head. The advocate here to multiple ways to see and experience this area. I am the executive director for the governor for our Asian American from the governor. I must truly make this This is not a medical therapy. It is a very, very simple, extremely simple method everybody can use without a license to not only heal you but also do the diagnosis. Uh, it is called Paida, Lajin. Paida means slapping, very easy. Lajim means stretch. You just lie down the bench like this, lift up one leg, then you begin the job. How do I start with this? How did I start with this? I was educated in the United States in a business school. So I started from Wall Street. I worked in the big building, <laughs> World Trade Center for a couple of years, and Hong Kong for over 10 years. It's all about investment, which has nothing to do with this kind of healing stuff. But at the age of 40, I quit from the finance area, and I started my journey in search of healing. At the beginning, it's still not quite a lot to do with the healing. I wrote a book because I was interested in culture. But, uh, okay, it's always be better to begin without relying on something else. So I wrote a fiction book. It's about investment banking. The name is called Sex and the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a very sexy book. Okay, it's a fiction. That published in both Made in China and Taiwan. This is so and funny. After that, I got involved with uh, designing for the States. Oh. Medicine. 
but it's also a fiction for you. Because in China, I think in the whole world, it's very hard for normal people to read a book about medicine. But if it's a story, it's a fiction, it's much easier for people to read, especially for the Chinese. See, the most Chinese Kung Fu book writer is called Jin Yong, but he's not a real Kung Fu guy, yet he wrote a lot of books. Millions of Chinese are fascinated by his book. So I think this might be a better way to promote the natural way of healing. But in my journey in search of the healers in order to write the book, those healers encouraged me to learn this kind of stuff. So at the beginning, what I learned is not Pai Da La Jin, it's acupressure. You just use your fingers to press on echo points. <coughs> and the first teacher I met, very funny, he is not a medical doctor, of course. In fact, most of the great healers I met in my life, they are not doctors. They don't have a medical background. Uh, they think. all think more than what you want. I said. I love the I'm background, maybe for later, but I want to see him actually slapping. Many retired, I just do my field study then to write a book. But this gentleman said, you indeed, I so learn my to learn what? In the, that's very, then we got a diet. Alright, so let's just look at a case. Bulgarian man's frozen shoulder unbalanced body improved after Baida. This is him. He's got very tough time lifting his shoulder. He's taking off his shirt. Now you can also see even his whole body is kind of like this. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah, he kind of face us. Because this is all the... People will say, okay, this is only a bone, bones problem. So once bones you do this, meridians unblock, then the muscles are Unblock the meridians. And the muscles can do the work. Yeah, come here, I'll show you how to do this. You, you stand here. You stand here. You feel like this, with both hands first. Yeah. yeah. Try this first, I just want to demonstrate here, like this. One hand. So for now, for now. Yeah. You have to cover them. Yes, yes. The, the yes. You see, if you do like this, you cannot cover them. You have to cover them. So what is the, in the shape? The, the yes. Yes. Uh, I love it. The translations. I'm excited to see this. We have more chat and we also have another chat. See from you. To do the logic, the logic. This way, this way. Wait, they haven't done anything. These two gentlemen, they help. This, when you slap others, you are actually slapped. Also, here, yeah, big problem with. Because we have a limited time, we can only do this part. Но защото ние нямаме достатъчно време, сега ние може само тази част можеше да работим върху нея. If we finish all the arm and all the both legs, or the both legs, ако ние приключиме с цялата ръка и двата му крака, and also he has big problem with his spine. И той има сериозен проблем с гръбначния стълб. We do all. I love it. I love it. They they didn't really show him doing it. I think that's the. Ah, oh, that's the trick of it all. You gotta 
yeah, do the stretching. Okay, so there's the lodging methods. Reclining bones are in place, tendons are flexible, would naturally be smooth, chi, and blood flow. Proper sequence. What's that mean? Wow, wow. Staying on a stretching board. It's a lajin board. Raise both arms to hold the door frame on both sides. Stretch your arms as much as possible. L-shaped lajin. Combination of reclining and standing. Lowest position. You know, I can't sit in lowest position. I, I've always wanted to, but I never could. Let's just see this guy for a quick hey, second. <laughs> hey, this is Stu at the beautiful Purple Valley, and we're here with Joey Ma. Job done. So a little gap here that's okay but ideally we bring it in close okay now if your knee will be fine because it requires this major external rotation of the hips now for many people the feet will be further forward the knees will be up here okay if that's the case you're not going to be able to do padmasana you won't be able to do it you can work on the opening of the hips and you can work on learning to cross the legs in sukhasana that's a better thing for you but as a basic rule we always look at uh, uh, this range of mobility first Wow, look at that range of mobility. Understand is when my leg is straight, okay, if I rotate the leg out like this and rotate the leg in, then you can pretty much see from the shin bone to the thigh bone, it's all pretty much in All right, I'm about done here. I think I had f enough fun for today. I hope you guys had fun. Oh, yeah, this is really how you diagnose blockages. So. It's all red. There's no purple. It's There's all about slapping. The toxins. That solidified. And after five minutes, if you look at your inner elbow to see whether there's any purple or black spots. These are I don't think I'd ever have purple or black spots. That solidified in your microcirculation and they're blocking your capillaries and limbs. So if you look at my arm, I slap probably one or two minutes. It's all red. There's no purple. Oh, there's no hurts. black spots. It hurts yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I think I had enough fun for today. But, um, yeah, if you guys are going to be around, I'll probably be, um, I'll probably be back around later just to do DJ at the full moon. This is the slapper I got for slapping myself. Hopefully it's good. I'm not sure. We're going to learn more, though, uh, next time, hopefully. But, uh, yeah. I don't know if you guys saw the website for Padashin, but they've got... You can do it for anything. Symptoms. Let's look at these symptoms. Stiff knee. Uh, they have uh, Padashin for menstrual pain. Frozen shoulder. Stiff neck. Tennis elbow. Skin itch. Tenovitis, rhinitis, constipation, hiccup. They got hiccup. Varicose veins. They got it all. Yeah, I recommend checking out nosebleeds, cramps, mosquito bites. Check it out. It's pretty interesting. I don't know. All right, that's all for me, folks. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Poof. <laughs>
Bye, guys. Take care.